Hello and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. That's BlenderTEK.com. Don't forget to remember, create your way. Today I'm going to be showing you tips and tricks that are secrets volume 2. I've outlined a few tricks that I've uh, remembered, learned, etc. in the last few days. I haven't uploaded any videos in the last two days. If you have any ideas for tutorials for us to upload, let us know. We're kind of drawing a blank. Um, any object, any scene, any architecture, etc. Anything you want to see a full length tutorial on, let us know in the comment section. So anyway, I'm going to be showing you a few tricks today that I didn't even realize existed. And anyways, don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. The team tries to add between 3 to 10 a day, except for the last two days. We've been busy with Halloween and a couple other things came up. Anyways, so I've been working on this guitar model myself, and uh, it's the perfect example to show you uh, the first trick I want to bring up, and that's what's called um, local and global views that I never knew existed. So let's say, for example, I was in top mode here. Let's let's select the uh, the fretboard here the darker wood one. So from top view, as you can see, it's kind of hard to see where it's going. If we go into wireframe, it's extremely hard to see what what's going on here. If we wanted to work on it, if we wanted to move it a little bit, if we wanted to change some vertices around. So here's a quick trip I, trick I learned. I'm going to turn on screencast keys first. Alright, so like I said, here's the trick I learned. If you've got an object selected, and you just really can't see what you're doing. You can go and you can hide things one by one. You know, I could take the guitar body and I could hide it. But here's what I learned is an easier way. With your object selected, just hit the forward slash on your numpad and it goes into local view. So that just brings you into just that object's view and it hides basically everything else. It doesn't hide it exactly, but it brings you into a localized view as the word suggests and now you can go ahead and edit this all you want in any views and whatever and then when you want to go back all you have to do and again in any view is just hit the forward slash button again and you go back to where you were before so then we can go back to solid and we're right where we were so that's an easy way instead of having to go and select this and hide it and then select that and hide it and then select each of these and hide it instead of doing that I can just select the object I want to work on and then hit forward slash on the numpad and boom everything else is hidden so forward slash again and we're back to where we were exactly back to where we were so that's one thing I wanted to show you that I uh, I picked up here I I didn't know it existed at all because you never really see or you never see global here so you never get that hint so that's a quick one I l picked up that uh, might save some time in certain situations when you don't want to go around hiding everything. And here's another little neat thing about it. If you wanted to do more than one object at once, let's say we want to keep the fretboard and we want to keep the body, but we want to and we want to bring those into local view. We hold down shift and right click on the body. So now we have the body and the fretboard selected. As you can see from my outliner here, I have the body and the fretboard selected. Now if we press forward slash, and your mouse has to be in your 3D view window. As you can see, now I can just work on those two and the rest are not hidden, but they're they're out of out of the viewport for now. And then forward slash again brings everything back. So you can do it on multiple objects at once. You can do it in edit mode, object mode, you can do it in all the modes. One last thing when we're working with multiple objects is, so again I have the body and the fretboard selected and I want to bring them into local view so I press numpad forward slash and then let's say I want to send just the body back. All I have to do is press M and you can see move from local view instead of usually be moved to a different layer, right? So hit OK and that sends it back to global view and now we're just working on the fretboard again and then numpad slash and we're back to all of them again and that we still have or we don't have the body selected anymore because we sent it back to global view because we were just working on the fretboard last so that's one more little trick that works along with this so it's kinda like two or three tricks in one here's another one that 
I've seen used before, but I didn't really notice it. I've never really picked up on it. But now that I've noticed it, it's become extremely handy for me. Let me go into front view, and I've got all these frets here, for example, right? So let me select them and go into edit mode. So I'll just box select one. Let's say I want to scale this single fret. So I'm going to press S to scale along the Z axis. So I want to make it taller. Let me go into a different view. Let me say I want to make it taller along the Z axis, like that. And let's say I want to scale along the Y axis as well to make it fatter. But I want to do it in equal amounts to kind of keep this profile. So what I can do is I'll, I go scale Z. And let's say I want it 1.5 times bigger along the Z. So you could type in 1.5, right? But here's a trick I learned. You can also type in 1 times. So that's shift and 8 to get the, the uh, multiplication operator down here. You can see at the bottom of my window. And then you can go times 1.5, and that's a bad example again because that's an even number. But that you can use you can use math operations when you're entering in numbers. So now that'll scale it 1.5 times. I think just multiplication works in some instances. I haven't tried all the operators, but yeah, basically you can scale in the Z, and you can go say two times three. So that'll give me six in total. And then I'm going to scale it along the Y. And I want to get the same amount. So I go two times. And sometimes you have to press it twice, three. And that gives me six. So that keeps the profile. And it keeps everything equal because I'm using math operators. So it's the same number every time. Now, when you're working with even numbers like this, obviously you can just enter in six. But if you're working with things that are decimals or fractions, this can come in useful in a lot of places. So that's just a little trick I picked up. Just the basic fact that you can use math operators in when you go in to enter uh, any kind of numbers. So you can do that for grabbing, you can do that for scaling, you can do that for any kind of translation. I haven't tested it in all th all scenarios, but I believe you can also do it for certain inputs, you know, like for resolution, you can go 1080 times 2 and see that brings up 2186 or 2160, sorry, 2160 divided by 2 1080. So you can use it in basically anywhere. So you can use math operands anywhere in Blender pretty much and so that can save you from doing from opening basically calculator up and having another application you have to tab into so next up is another one for scaling so again let's say I have this fret and I wanna I wanna move it just slightly let's go to side view you can see how it's intersecting just a little bit, which I want in this model, but let's say I want it just right on the surface, like pixel perfect. I can zoom in as close as I can, so that's as far as I can zoom in. I press G to grab. Now instead of using my mouse and trying to line it up perfectly, what I can do is I can just use the arrow keys and it goes one pixel at a time. You see that just barely moving? It hasn't even gone to 0 0.0001 yet. There we go. I just moved to 0 0.0001. So you can move in one ten thousandth of a blender unit or less. I'm moving a pixel at a time. So let's see when it turns to 2, right? Come on. It just moved. Okay, so how many times can you press the left and right or up and down arrow keys to get to your next one? You can move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. I'm just going to guess here now roughly a hundred times. So that's like one one hundred thousandths of a blender unit you can move at a time and the further you're zoomed out 
the uh, the more it'll work. So if you press G again, as you can see, it's now moving it in a lot quicker increments. You can see the numbers in the bottom are moving up faster. So that's and like I said, you can move in any direction up, back, down, etc. And it also works for scaling. So if I'm scaling and I just want to scale it a certain way, just like that, you know. Bad example, I have all my frets selected again, but you get the idea. It works for basically any operand or any tr translation, any kind of scaling, anything you're doing to an object in Blender. So that was another little quick one I picked up. Um, another thing to do with the arrow keys is if you're in just basic 3D view, it doesn't matter what you have selected, but um, hold control and use the I showed you last time in volume 1 that control up just moves you in full screen in whatever window you have the mouse hovered over and moves you in and out of full screen so it'll close all your extraneous windows well if you use the left and right arrow keys it moves you into different presets so if I press control left arrow it moves me into um, the game properties view, I guess. Whatever view this is preset, I don't know. Okay, it's the game logic preset you can see up here. And if I press it again, I go into whatever this is, some sort of user perspective full screen mode. Control left arrow again brings me into quad view, so that's the standard Maya view, I believe. And it brings up the timeline. It moves my outliner and my properties to this side. So again, yeah, this is the default view. So control left arrow. This is the composition, compositing. That's hard to say. Compositing view. So when I'm using nodes, I'm using the stock render for now. But when I want to go ahead and start using the cycles render on this object, and I'm using nodes, this is for compositing. And so it just keeps these windows open so if I want to work with images, textures, UVs and I want to see what changes on my model at once and my camera perspective since that's all I'm going to see in the render as I'm doing compositing that's very useful and it brings up the render settings right here so that brings the compositing preset up and next one is for animation next one is 3D full view the next one is video editing, the next one is UV editing, the next one is scripting, the next one is motion tracking, and then we're back to stock again. And you can go in the other direction too. Yeah, I found that's pretty useful for switching around views quickly, especially when you get to the, want to get to the quad view, because uh, sometimes that's useful. And instead of splitting the windows four ways, that I can just I can just go into that view. And yeah, you can use the drop down view too. But I just found that as a little trick that I learned. So, so whatever preset views you have, using Control and the left and right arrows moves you along the different views. Here's one last thing I want to show you. I'm going to open up a new Blender file so that we can do it. So I'm just going to save this to make sure I don't lose any work. And then let me open a new Blender file. So by stock I use the Cycles Render, of course. And let's say I just want to add a mesh cube. And then I add a material onto it. I'm just going to add a stock material. And now I'm going to bring up the node editor. So I've got the stock just white diffuse color, but usually we want to put a texture over it, which is an image texture. So let me find an image texture. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm st I've still got the node editor set up, and I let's say I want to drop a texture in. It can be a normal map, it can be a regular texture, whatever. Uh, usually you would in your Blender window you would hit Shift A, and then you would go um, where I can never find these texture image texture and you would get the image texture node then you would hit open and you would go find it I found a faster way you can just simply drag and drop it right into the node editor and now as you can see it has that image texture open and now all I gotta do is connect the nodes essentially yeah you can just drag and drop any images and textures you want right into the node editor so I find that's extremely useful and like I said if we go back to the node editor if I want to set up a normal map, you know, I can just bring in my normal map for that. 
drag and drop and now uh, you can see if I I've got my normal map right there as well as just my regular diffuse color map and then I would just go control A and then uh, normal map you know and connect it all together right so that saves some time instead of browsing through the blender file browser which I find kinda sucks you can just simply drag and drop your image textures in as much as you want. I believe you can drop scripts in. Um, again, I haven't played with this too much. This is one that I just picked up. I saw in a video I was watching. And so yeah, play around with that. Let me know if you found any other things you can do with these tricks. And uh, leave me a comment. So that's just a quick video I'm going to upload for today because I've been kind of lazy the last couple days and the Blender Tech team has been kind of busy also working on their own projects and like I said we are kind of coming up empty as to what we should make full length tutorials for because YouTube is full of full length tutorials but we want to know what you want to see what is missing from YouTube what is missing from Vimeo it's, you know what is a paid tutorial that you'd have to get like say the architecture academy but you want to see for free on YouTube basically let us know in the comments so anyways thank Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTEK.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. We try to add from 3 to 10 a day. If you dislike this video for some reason, please leave a comment or email the team at info at BlenderTech.com as to what you did not like and what we can improve on. We also take requests for tutorials, like I was saying before, so let us know what you want or want more of. See you next time and remember, create your way.